Good morning. Common record is 10, 11 a.m. Today's date is May 15, 2014. My name is Abel Sabrell with Pierce Reporting Video and Dirty Gates and Services. The court report today is Richard Master Batista, Pierce Reporting, located at 530 B Street, Suite 350, San Diego, California, 92101. This begins the videotape deposition of Pedro Carlos testifying writer of San Diegans for Open Government versus City of San Diego et al. Case number 3720140000217, taken at 1203rd Avenue, Suite 1200, San Diego. Will counsel please identify yourselves and state who you represent? David Carlin on behalf of the City of San Diego and Jan Goldsmith. And Corey Briggs for San Diegans for Open Government. Thank you. The Corey for now sworn the witness. Could I have you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear that the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kiros, again, my name is David Carlin. I represent the city of San Diego and Jane Goldsmith, the defendants in this matter. Um, I'm going to ask a, make some preliminary statements, ask some preliminary questions. Uh, the first one, could you please state and spell your last name for the record? My name is Pedro Quiroz. Last name is Q-U-I-R-O-Z. Before we begin this morning, you, you mentioned the San Diego Police Department. Are you a member or uh, an employee of the city of San Diego? No, I'm a retired San Diego Harbor Police Officer. Okay. Well, the reason I ask that is, is I assume then in your career as a Harbor Police Officer, you may have had an opportunity to testify in court. Is that correct? Correct. And this is very similar to that. Have you ever had your deposition taken before? Yes. Okay. How many other times? A lot. Okay. Uh, any, the reason why I ask that question, and other lawyers probably in the past, is just to make sure that you understand that uh, even though this isn't a court, there isn't a judge present, though, that this is sworn testimony asking you to provide uh, the best testimony that you can today to the best of your recollections. The attorney for San Diegans for Open Government, Mr. Briggs, he may uh, interpose objections to the questions that I've asked. Uh, doesn't mean that, well, unlike a courtroom, there isn't a judge to make an immediate ruling on those objections. So unless you're instructed not to respond, it's anticipated and expected that you will respond to the question. Again, the objection is to, in essence, place a mark in the record so if those questions come back in the legal proceedings themselves, a judge can at some future time then make that determination as to whether the question was impermissible or permissible or the answer shouldn't be admitted. Do you understand that? I do. And you also understand, again, that this is being not only uh, recorded by a court reporter but also videotaped. Normally, these depositions are just uh, taken by the court reporter, and the reason why I mention this again is you're doing a great job, obviously, given your experience. Only one of us can speak at a time. Uh, it's always advisable to wait until I finish my question, maybe wait a pause or a beat to see if Mr. Briggs is going to raise an objection before answering the question. If you don't understand anything I, that I've asked or will ask, please let me know, and I'll try to rephrase. As I was stating again off the record, this isn't, I guess, a quiz. There's no grade. I'm just going to try to, to the best of my abilities, ask you some questions and hopefully ask that you provide the answers to the best of your abilities to understand that. I do. Is there anything that would cause you reason to believe that you're unable to give your best testimony today? No. Okay. Again, we're here to talk about a lawsuit that was filed by the San Diegans for open government against the city of San Diego and Jane Goldsmith. Are you familiar with that lawsuit? Yes. How are you familiar with that lawsuit? I discussed it with my attorney. Okay. When you say your attorney, that's Mr. Briggs? Yes. And there were other attorneys in his office, to your knowledge, is that correct? Yes. Um, Michaela Gladden, do you know her? Yes. Any other attorneys that you, I guess when you say you spoke to your attorney, we're speaking of Mr. Briggs, Ms. Gladden, is that correct? Correct. Is there any others? Mr. Briggs, is there any others? No questions for you? Yeah, if you, if unfortunately, you this is your testimony. If you don't know the I names, know. you can just say you don't know the names. I don't know. You don't know the names or there isn't any other individual? I'm going to say I don't know. Okay. And again, I'm not asking you what 
I guess the what you've discussed with Mr. Briggs or Ms. Gladden or any other attorney who might represent San Diegans for open government. I may ask questions, though, that talk about whether or not there were discussions, not, I guess, the content of those discussions. And when we get to there, I hope you'll understand that difference or significance. Are you a member of San Diegans for open government? Yes. And how long have you been a member? Um, somewhere between 2011 and 2012, I'm not quite sure. And do you hold any sort of office or title within that organization? I'm on the board, secretary. So you're on the board of directors, correct? Mm-hmm. Is correct. that a yes? And then you also hold a position as the secretary as a... That is my title. That's your title. Yeah. And prior to your, uh, how long have you been on the board of directors? Um, like I said, between 2011 and 2012, up to now. Prior to 2011 or prior to joining the board of directors, were you a member of San Diegans for Open Government? I had attended meetings, um, but I wasn't an active member. And again, some of the information that we've, I've learned through discovery that there might even have been a uh, predecessor entity that became San Diegans for Open Government. Uh, I think it's the All People's Breakfast Organization Committee, if I have that correct, I can look. Are you familiar with that organization? I'm familiar with the name. Okay. Were you a participant or a member in that organization? No. Let me just get organized here a little bit better. I'm going to go through a series of documents as well as ask you questions regarding the documents. So the first document that I'm going to mark is actually the notice to your deposition. I'll mark that as exhibit number one. And this is actually a document entitled Amended Notice of Taking Videotape Deposition. Do you see that document? Yes. And the reason I'm going to ask about this document is if you turn, I think it's to the second page, there were a series of documents that the city was asking be produced at today's deposition. In fact, uh, 21 different categories. Do you see that? They begin on page 2 and ends on page 4. Oop, I gave you mine, but that's no problem. I'm going to swap with you at least the front page. Let me do this. secret notes or anywhere. But my <laughs> handwriting will show up on some, highlights on others. It just helps me ask questions. And the question is, is did you produce any documents with you today in response to this document production request? At this point, let me just interject and say that uh, the understanding of the request is that we didn't have to bring today anything that's already been turned over in prior discovery. And I know from the large stack of documents here on the table that you did get them previously. Uh, Michaela Gladden also emailed you some other documents this morning, and I saw your email acknowledging receipt. The previously produced documents plus what was emailed today uh, is everything that's responsive to the 21 categories. There may be some things that don't exist, but everything that we have that would be responsive to the 21 uh, was either produced before or with the email today. And Mr. Briggs, can I ask you a question? And I, I do will note for the record that you did file on behalf of the plaintiff written objections to the document production request. So given your comments, is it clear then that even though there were objections that were made, that responsive documents in the possession of the plaintiff were in fact produced and disclosed to the city and Mr. Goldsmith? If I understand you correctly, Dave, uh, the answer is that everything that's not subject to objections has been produced okay. either previously or with the email from Michaela today.
in fact, uh, Mr. Kiros, I'm going to hand you, uh, you heard Mr. Briggs state that Ms. Gladden had emailed me certain documents or email documents to me this morning. I made copies of those documents. I'm just going to mark these collectively as exhibit number two. I'm going to ask that you take a look at them and with the assistance of Mr. Briggs if you can confirm that those are the documents that were sent to the city's attorney's office this morning. Okay. If you're asking me, I can't confirm that. probably going to ask you some additional questions later on throughout the deposition about other documents that might be responsive to the document production request. And I would anticipate that Mr. Briggs might then at that point in time either make objections or make a record in terms of why certain documents were or were not produced, just so that we have that understanding. How did you become involved with San Diegans for Open Government? Objection, attorney, client, privilege, don't answer the question. Are you going to follow your attorney's advice and not answer that question? I am. Okay. I'd ask that the record be marked so that I can refer to this in the future. I'd also object on the grounds that he has an associational right of privacy under the federal and state constitutions and how and why he becomes a member of the organization is subject to that right of privacy. And you mentioned earlier that you were a member of the board of directors. How many board of directors or how many directors are on the board of San Diegans for Open Government presently? I am aware of three. And who are those individuals? Um, I'll get back to you. I can't, I'm drawing a blank. Okay. Well, maybe I can help you out if I'm going to mark another. I remember uh, Richard Lawrence. And I can't remember the other. Okay. I'm going to mark another exhibit next in order. That is exhibit number three. I ask that you take a look at that. See if that helps, one, refresh your recollection. I kind of can't spell say it. Langwasser, I know. Langwasser. Nobody ever pronounces her name right. And that's spelled for the record L A N G W A S S E R. So if you take a look at exhibit number three, mm -hmm. and I'll represent that this is at the top of the document, it says Secretary of State, or State of California Secretary of State Statement of Information. Have you seen this document before, to your knowledge? No. It looks, does it not, that it pertains to the San Diegans for open government, is that correct? I'm going to object to number one, the document speaks for itself, and number two, the witness just said he's not seen it before. Okay. If you look then towards the middle of the document itself, there appears to be, excuse me, a block with the name of Richard Lawrence, and above that it says Chief Executive Officer. Do you see that? Yes. Does this reflect your recollection as to whether or not Mr. Lawrence is on the board of directors for San Diegans for Open Government. Yes, yes he is. And his title is Chief Executive Officer? Yes. Is he also a board member? Yes. Is there an executive director, to your knowledge? I'm going to object on the grounds that the term executive director is vague and undefined. If you know what it means, you can answer. Uh, no, I'm not sure. I'm going to hold on to that because I'm going to ask you some other questions. but. And then, of course, there's your name. Is that correct? Yes. And it states that you were the secretary, correct? The document itself. Yes. And then below that, the chief financial officer, Karen Langwasser, correct? Correct. Now, do you know where the principal place of business for San Diego's, San Diegans for Open and Government is? Um, I guess at this point, Dave, I'm going to object that these questions appear to have absolutely nothing to do with the Public Records Act lawsuit. I mean, I note that we're 
This is a case that's tried to a judge. We have a video camera here. And you're asking questions about an organization that submitted a public records request to your clients. And the only issues in this case are whether the request was legitimate and whether the response to it was legitimate. I'm not sure what all of these organizational questions have to do with the price of tea in China, or more specifically, this lawsuit. So I'm not yet objecting. I am noting that if we're going to continue down this line, we're very close to start starting to get some objections. Understood. I mean, you can certainly make a record. But I'm going to ask, do you know where the principal place of business is for San Diegans for Open Government? I know where it is, but I don't know the address. If you take a look at exhibit number three again, I'll point your attention to, I guess, the upper third of the document itself. There's a street address and a mailing address box. You see that? Yes. Does this document refresh your recollection as to where the principal place of business for San Diegans for Open Government is located? To a point, I know it's on Marina Boulevard, but I'm not sure of the suite number. Does this address look familiar to you? Yes. In terms of just the fact that it says Marina Boulevard? Correct. Is that where board meetings are held, at the Marina address? No. Where are board meetings held? I'm actually going to object and assert the right of privacy, the association right of privacy where the board holds its meetings, especially since they're done with the board's attorney present, is nobody's business. So don't answer the question. Are you going to follow your attorney's advice and not answer that question? Yes. And ask that Bert Hecker again be marked. How often are board meetings held? Once a month. Okay. And again, I originally started asking you some questions about the number of directors on the board itself. We've identified yourself, Mr. Lawrence, and Ms. Langwasser. Are there any other individuals who make up the board or who are on the board of directors, to your knowledge? Not that I'm aware of. Another document next in order is exhibit number four. Can I just ask, Rafa, what was exhibit? Oh, exhibit two was the stack that he hadn't seen. Sorry. I ask that you take a look at this document. Go ahead, sir. Have you seen exhibit number four previously, prior to today? I can't remember seeing it. It appears, does it not, to be the bylaws for San Diegans for open government? Yes. And that's because it appears on the first page of the document itself, and that's what its title is, correct? I'm going to, um, just for the record, I'm going to object. He says he doesn't recall seeing it before and is essentially testifying as to what it says on its face. Well, if I do you know what the mission and purpose of San Diegans for Open Government is? Yes. And what is that? 
that to assure that there's open government to to the community and to the people of San Diego. Let me turn your attention to, let me see. If I direct your attention to page five of 17, you can see it in the lower right hand corner of exhibit number four. Okay. There's discussion in the document itself about a chair of the board. So my question is, is, is there a chair of the board of directors? And if so, who is that person? Well, what exactly is the question? Is Do you have a question independent of the document, or are you asking him to read the document and tell you what it says? My question is, is, is there a chairman or chairperson for the board of directors, to your knowledge? Well, the only people I know on the board are the ones that are on this page. And that's exhibit number three, correct? Correct. Uh, is Mr. Lawrence the chairperson of the board of directors, to your knowledge? I'm not sure. Is Ms. Langerwasser, is she the chairperson of the board of directors? I'm not sure. You're not the chairperson for the board of directors, correct? That I don't. I'm <laughs> not. Well, let's hang on. What this provision says is that meetings shall be presided over by the chair. If you're asking about the organization as opposed to meetings, I mean, it's just not clear to me what your questions are, but it does seem that the witness answered, so I guess there's no objection to make. Okay. And I asked you earlier, again, to your knowledge, if there was somebody who held the title of executive director for St. Diego's for Open Government. Do you recall that question? Yes. Is there an executive director for St. Diego's for Open Government, I'm to your knowledge? object, asked, and answered. You can answer if you want. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who that person would be. And you're the secretary. Is there a treasurer to your knowledge for San Diegans for Open Government? I'm not sure who that person would be. We have a financial officer, but I don't know what duties that person does. Well, I guess that's yeah. because you take a look at exhibit number three and you see the title for Ms. Lagerwasser, correct? Correct. And yes. she's at least identified in the form as the chief financial officer. At least that's what the form says, correct? Yeah. Correct. I, given the witness's answer, I think you probably should define what you mean by a treasurer as opposed to a chief financial officer or, well, so that the witness understands what you're okay. asking about. Well, if I ask you to turn to page 8 of 17 of exhibit number 4, we'll go back to the executive director. And I can represent to you, and you can take a look, that this document, at least from my perspective, defines the role, well, section 6, duties of the executive director. Do you see that section? Yes. And this is where I ask is, do you know if there's an executive director for San Diegans for Open Government? And I understand your question is you do not, correct? I, I guess at this point I'm going to object and say that I, for the life of me, can't figure out what this question has to do with the Public Records Act case. I don't see that it's relevant or that it's even within the scope of permissible discovery, so I'm going to object. And I'm going to tell the witness not to answer. This sounds like some sort of fishing expedition to me. Okay, you've made your record, but I'm going to ask that if you're going to follow your attorney's advice, and if you are, I'm going to ask that the record be marked. Are you going to follow your attorney's advice and not answer a question that you've already answered previously that you don't know who or if there's an executive director for St. Diego's for Open Government? Well, since he, you just said he's already answered it, you don't really need another answer. I'll follow my attorney's advice. Okay, mark the record, please. 
turn to the page. Page 9 of 17. Section 8 talks about the duties of the secretary. You see that section? Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to object and give the same instruction to the witness. Well, let me ask a foundational question. What do you believe your duties as secretary for San Diegans for open government are without reference to this document itself? I'm going to object to that question, too, not only on the same grounds, but on the grounds of Mr. Kiddos's right of privacy as a member of the organization and on attorney-client privilege grounds and instruct the witness not to answer. Are you going to follow your attorney's advice? Yes. Mark the record, please. Do you agree, Mr. Carreras, that the duties of the secretary as designated in exhibit number four are to keep, certify and keep current at the principal offices of the corporation the original or a copy of these bylaws? Do you see that? I'm going to object. Same objections. On top of that, the witness has already said he doesn't recall seeing this document. So you're basically asking him to just read the document and tell you whether he reads it the same way you do, that's not appropriate. The document speaks for itself. I'm instructing the witness not to answer the question. Are you going to follow your attorney's advice? Yes. Mark the record. Do you keep, as secretary for St. Diego's for Open Government, a copy of the bylaws for the organization? Same objection, same instruction to the witness. Are you going to follow your attorney's advice? Yes. Mark the record. Do you keep a record or minutes of any meetings that occur with St. Diego's for Open Government? Same objection, same instruction. Are you going to follow your attorney's advice? Yes. Mark the record. Do you give notice as the secretary of board meetings for St. Diego's for Open Government? Same objections, same instruction. Are you going to follow your attorney's advice? Yes. Mark the record. Another exhibit next to the orders, exhibit number five. I ask that you take a look at that. First off, have you ever seen this document before? I don't recall seeing this document. Another exhibit is next in order, exhibit number six. I ask that you take a look at that. seen this document before that we've marked as exhibit number six? I'm not sure if this is the exact document I've seen before, but I've seen documents like this. Okay. I okay. probably should just be noted for the record that this appears to be the original complaint from this lawsuit and not the operative first amended complaint. That's correct. I mean, I can identify for the record that what I've handed you and marked as exhibit number six is entitled Verified Complaint for Declaratory and Injunctive Relief and petition for writ of mandate under the California Public Records Act and other laws. I'd also note that it appears to be incomplete, but that's, I'm just noting that for the record. Since it's only six pages long, and I happen to know that the original complaint was longer. That is correct. This is only the 
complaint itself and not the attached exhibits. Or the verification. I have separately held that off. So we ask, then, as the Secretary for San Diegans for Open Government, not asking you what kind of discussions you may have had with Mr. Briggs or any other attorney, to your knowledge, were there discussions amongst the Board of Directors before initiating or filing this lawsuit against the City of San Diego and Mr. Goldsmith, again, the lawsuit that I referred to was the complaint we've marked as Exhibit Number 6. I'm going to object. Same objections, same instruction. Are you going to follow your attorney's advice? Yes. Mark the record, please. If there were discussions, would those have been recorded in the board minutes? I'm going to object. Same objections, not only same objections, but it's also a hypothetical and assumes facts, not in evidence. Same instruction. Are you going to follow your attorney's advice? Yes. I'd ask the record to be marked again. Do you actually keep board minutes of meetings that occur amongst the board of directors? Same objections once again. Same instruction to the witness. Yes. I haven't asked the question, but again, are you going to follow your attorney's advice? Yes. Mark the record. Well, let me ask you again, maybe more general broad question. What do you do as the secretary for St. Diego's for Open Government? I'm going to object. Same objections. <laughs> same instruction. Are you going to follow your attorney's advice? Yes. Mark the record. Let me ask you a question. You said you had seen documents similar to what we previously marked as exhibit number six. When did you see those documents? Within the last, within the last three weeks. In preparation for your deposition today? Mm -hmm. No, I, I didn't prepare for this deposition. Why would you have an opportunity in the last three weeks to go back and look at this document or documents like this? I'm going to object and I'm going to especially emphasize the attorney client privilege and instruct the witness not to answer. Are you going to follow your attorney's advice? Yes. Mark the record. Do you recall whether or not you had seen this document prior to the date of January 28th, 2014? I don't know. I couldn't recall that. Mr. Kuros, I need to ask you where you reside. Do you reside within the city of San Diego? Yes. Okay. Do you know if any other members of the board reside within the city of San Diego? Now I'm going to object and assert their right of privacy. The question is, is do you know? I'm not asking you where they live, but simply do you know? That's a fair distinction. You can answer that question whether you know. I don't know. How long have you resided within the city of San Diego? Twenty-five, twenty-six years. Can I ask your address? I'm going to object on privacy grounds and instruct the witness not to answer. Well, we can have this discussion now, Mr. Briggs, and we can have it later. But part of your allegations and attempt to meet and confer with you on this record is in the First Amendment complaint uh, cause of action for waste of government funds, which requires that there be a taxpayer that resides within the city of San Diego. Well, you've already, the witness has already established that he lives in the city of San Diego and has lived here for more than 20 years. If you want to ask him now whether he pays real property taxes, that's pretty much going to seal your question. Well, I mean, I've, I've also, I'll ask the question, do you pay real property taxes? Yes. Okay. Are you going to follow your attorney's advice, though, and not answer my question as to the specific address where you reside? Yes. Okay. I'd ask that the if, record be marked. And as part of the meet and confer process on this issue, I'd ask why you need to know the address. Well, I'd like to verify where he lives. I know he stated it under oath, and I don't 
I see it in his face, but as maybe as a police officer for so many years, he would have some understanding that I have to do due diligence to have some understanding and verify his statements that he resides actually in the city of San Diego. Well, so here's, here's the problem. Your office is like a sieve when it comes to information. And my concern is that your office will continue to try to humiliate and embarrass people who are, shall we say, critics of your office. If there were a protective order in place, or perhaps you would be satisfied, maybe I could persuade the witness to show you his driver's license, and you can note that he lives in the city of San Diego without noting the number of his house, perhaps we could work that out. I don't have a problem with verification. What I have a problem with is your office having information that frankly you can't be trusted to keep quiet. Okay. Well, I, I've asked the question. You follow your attorney's advice. If I need or feel the need, I'll bring it up in a motion to compel further deposition testimony in front of the court. I'm not going to respond to your comments regarding my office or its abilities or inabilities to keep matters confidential or secret. No, I, I understand that. I keep putting it down, but I'll keep pulling it back up. This is exhibit number six. See, I'm very like. <laughs> I told him you were a good guy, Dave. Lori and I can have our discussions and our disagreements. We're not going to be here all day arguing over stuff. Let me ask you a question. Were you asked to review this doc or a document like the verified complaint that we marked as exhibit number six prior to uh, January 28th, 2014. I am definitely objecting on the grounds of attorney-client privilege and instructing you not to answer because you just asked him whether he was asked. Uh, and he's not going to answer that okay. question. Well, do you recall reviewing such a document? I believe your earlier testimony was this. You may have, it, it, but maybe I need some clarification on that because I also heard you testify that you've only looked at do certain documents within the last three weeks. And obviously, that wouldn't be within the time frame that I'm asking about now. Yeah, I couldn't tell you if I've seen it in that time frame. OK. I'm mark another exhibit, exhibit number seven, next in order represent to you that this is the verification that accompanied the complaint that we had marked as exhibit number six and ask you again if you had seen this document before. I can't be sure if I've seen this document. Okay. Question maybe for clarification, have you seen a document similar to this one in the past? No, yeah, I've seen documents similar. But you're not certain that you've seen this exact document previously? Correct. <laughs> Just for some record keeping, the next document order is document number eight. Mark that. I represent to you. Ask you again to take a look at it, but at least put on the record that it's entitled "Verified First Amendment Complaint for Declar Declaratory and Injunctive Relief: a Petition for Writ of Mandate under the California Public Records Act, Code of Civil Procedure, Section 526A, and other laws." Go ahead, sir. Have you seen this document before? I've seen documents like this. I'm not sure if I've seen this one. Okay. Again, mostly just doing record keeping or housekeeping now. I'll mark next in order number nine. Oops. And represent to you that this is the verification that accompanied the first admitted complaint that was marked as exhibit number eight. Again, ask you if you've seen this document before. I can't be sure if I've seen it, this document. As opposed to one like it? You yes, know? correct.
Let's go off the record just for a second. Yeah, that's fine. Take your mic off. Uh, Mr. Carreras, before we came back, we took a break, and when we just came back in, uh, Mr. Briggs informed me that you wanted to make a clarification from an earlier answer. Is that correct? Correct. And what did you wish to clarify? Well, you were talking about duties and titles earlier, and um, I just wanted to clarify that we're a small group and that gets together, and it's there. We don't really have like this issue with titles, we all participate, but there isn't uh, a formality, I would say, of, you know, this title does this and that title does that in this meeting. It's more just a small community of people coming together and dealing with issues. Uh, anything else? No, that's it. And as I promised, I'm going to mark next in order a large document that consists of about 140 to 100 maybe 42 pages. I'm not going to ask everything in those 142 pages, but I'm going to ask you to take a look at this document. I've actually put a paper clip towards the back end of the document, which I'll represent to you as the verification for these, which the document is entitled, Plaintiff San Diegans for Open Government's Responses and Objections to Defendants City of San Diego's special interrogatories set number one. So my first question is, is if you need a moment, but do you recognize this document? Yes, yes I do. And that, not just the verification that I believe you're looking at now, but the entire document itself. I've seen documents like this one, but I can't tell you that this is the one I've seen. Okay. Going back to the verification, the document towards the end, it's one, two, three, four pages from the end. It doesn't have a, its own particular page number, but at the top it does say verification. Do you see that page? Yes, I do. Is that your signature on this page? Yes, it is. That it was signed on or about March 19th, 2014, is that correct? That's what it states, yes. Do you have an independent recollection that that's when you signed this document? I have a recollection of signing it. I can be positive on that date, but I'm sure it was. Okay. What did you do in preparation? Well, let me ask you, what is your understanding of what a verification is? In particular, what this verification is and what it was used for? I'm going to object if you would like to ask him whether he has an understanding independent of anything he learned from his attorney I don't have an objection to that but I'm concerned that you've asked a question that's going to require him to tell you stuff that I've told him and I don't want that to happen but I also would like not to object if I can help it do you want to stick with your question or do you want to <laughs> rephrase it <laughs> I'll see if I can ask a different question okay but the ground rules always are not asking what, say, Mr. Briggs may have told you. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking you what Ms. Gladden may or may not have told you. So with that caveat or that understanding, you've signed a verification, correct? Correct. And that was a verification, was it not, for these responses, answers, and objections to what are known as special interrogatories. Was that your understanding? Yes. Okay. So my question, though, is what is your understanding, not what Mr. Briggs may or may not have told you or any other attorney, as to the purpose of this verification? That I'm verifying that the information that I know, according to this matter, is what I understand and it is true. Okay. 
And in fact, you can read it to verification itself. It says that uh, there's a small x. I'm informed and believed and on that ground allege that the matters stated in the foregoing document are true. Do you see that? Yes. And is that why you signed this verification on that, I guess, knowledge and information and belief? Yes. And I'm going to ask you again, as we kind of talked about before we took a break, some, I guess, hopefully clarifying questions from some of the answers that were given uh, in these responses to the special interrogatories. And I'm going to ask you, uh, one, if you have sort of independent knowledge, of what knowledge you might have. I know this isn't a question, but I'm trying to at least lay a foundation as to hopefully understand what I'm getting at or hope to get at. Um, and if you don't know, it's okay to tell me, or as a matter of, again, and I don't want information that Mr. Briggs has either told you or another attorney. You understand that? We should probably just clarify. I think you mean it, Dave, but let me just be sure. You know, if one of my paralegals conveys a message to the witness for me, that's equally attorney-client privilege. And so I ha do have staff in my office. It might not always be attorneys who are talking to the witness. Um, my behalf or lawyer's behalf. So I've understood all of your questions today to basically mean the law firm as opposed to whether it's a lawyer or a paralegal. I know you guys have investigators in your office and you assert attorney-client over that. I just want to make sure when you say attorneys, you really mean the law firm as opposed to somebody who has a bar card. I think you're correct. And okay. I have no dispute with that description, with that understanding that we're talking about law firms as well as you know, lawyers as well as non-lawyers within the capacities of rendering advice legal advice or legal services to St. Diego's for open government. Okay? I understand. Okay. And I hope to do this as expeditiously as possible, the famous lawyer's last words. Uh, <laughs> it's actually usually a curse when a lawyer says that. It, means it, it won't be fast. I'm sure the court reporter's heard it a billion times, and it's been a billion and one that it wasn't fast. But. Well, uh, well, with that said, I'll start the beginning of the document and ask if you the, the first interrogatory, if you take a look at page two. It was asking San Diegans for open government to state all facts that support a contention that Mr. Goldsmith is using his personal email account to conduct official city business. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. That is. What knowledge do you have that Mr. Goldsmith is using his personal email account to conduct city business. And let me just clarify, you're asking about knowledge that the witness has independent of anything he learned from lawyers or the law firm, right? Well, he's the verificant. He signed the verification. So I want to have an understanding as to what he knows and why he verified these particular responses. Fair enough, but the verification says he did it on information and belief. And so it's not uncommon for clients and witnesses to obtain information from attorneys. So if your question is, what does he know, independent of what he would have learned from his attorneys or law firm, that's perfectly fine. I just want to make sure that what you're getting at. If you're asking him at, to tell you everything he knows, I'm going to object on that one because then he would probably give you information that includes information you received uh, confidentially. Well, maybe a little try it in a two-part way. Let me just ask you, independent of any information that you may have gained through Mr. Briggs's law firm, do you have any knowledge of any facts that Mr. Goldsmith is using his personal email account to conduct official city business? Um, outside of the attorney's contact, I've only read publications such as in the Reader, um, others on the internet. And this is where it gets, I won't say problematic or tricky, but as a lawyer I have to ask you, okay, when you say publications and you mention the San Diego Reader, correct? Correct. Do you recall how many articles that you may have read from the San Diego Reader? No, I couldn't tell you that. Do you recall when you read articles from the San Diego Reader that discussed Mr. Goldsmith's use of his personal email account? I'm not positive, but about, I believe it's the latest issue or the last issue of the reader. Uh, 
So that's at least one article from the San Diego Reader. Any others from the San Diego Reader I, that you can recall? I, I am, like I said, I couldn't tell you the ad because uh, I just don't keep track of how many I've read. But um, I think I believe um, I think there's a publication called City Beat. And again, same sort of similar question. How many articles from the City Beat do, do you recall? I couldn't tell you. I mean, do you recall when's the last time you saw an article in the City Beat regarding this particular issue? No, because the last one that stands out is the reader one that I, that I read. But uh, on the internet, I've seen um, blogs, publications, that type of thing. But um, other, than, other than that, I couldn't tell you you know, if it was Voice of San Diego or something along those lines that I've, I've read those type of things. Now you mentioned blogs. Any particular blogs come to mind that, again, discuss this topic, Mr. Goldsmith's use of his personal email account? Mm, no. But you recall blogs? Do you remember how many? No. Voice of San Diego. Any articles from the Voice of San Diego that you can recall? I can recall reading about the subject, but I couldn't tell you anything else other than that. Okay. And other than information, and I'm, this is a characterization on my behalf, other than information that I guess comes to you through either media outlets or on the internet, uh, any other sources of information that you can recall that would give you knowledge of facts that Mr. Goldsmith is using his personal email account to conduct city business? Other than his attorneys, right? Other than his attorneys. Yeah. Um, no, not at this time. Okay. If you turn to page three, there's a response, and I'm going to read the response and then ask a question. The response is responding party has heard of multiple accounts of reporters having access to City Attorney Goldsmith through his private account. Do you see that sentence? It's uh, about second paragraph from the bottom. It's kind of a bad copy, but I think you can make it out. Yes, I see it. Okay. Do you have knowledge of what these multiple accounts, what those are? You mean, does he have knowledge independent of anything he learned from his attorneys? Correct? Do you have knowledge independent of what your attorneys, but I'm also going to ask, well, let me ask that first question. Independent of your attorneys, what this response is saying that you've, the responding party, now this is an entity, correct? S San Diego's for open government. Mm -hmm. Say yes. Correct. Has heard multiple accounts. So my question is particular to what knowledge you have of these accounts of Mr. Goldsmith, or I guess of reporters having access to Mr. Goldsmith? I guess I would go back to what I just discussed with you as far as the articles that I've read. Okay. Now, I do think, Mr. Briggs, I think it's fair for me to ask, even though I'm not asking specifically what information or what was told to him by his or her, the attorneys for San Diego's for Open Government, but I do think as the verification individual who verified these accounts to give me a description of what accounts is conveyed by this sentence. Is that a fair question in your opinion? If, I mean, you can ask the witness if, well, it sounds like a poorly worded question, but I can't think of why it's objectionable, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Other than it being poorly worded, I'm going to ask you, again, as the individual who reviewed, presumably reviewed, these responses, can you describe for me, now, this also includes information that you may have learned through other sources, not just independent of yourself, what it was meant by multiple accounts. Do you understand the question? Um, you're asking me that, that the city attorney had multiple accounts of using this private email? No. Okay. No. Actually, let, let me see if I can help here. Dave, you're asking about the, the term multiple accounts. Are you, are you basically asking the witness whether he knows of multiple reportings as opposed to multiple email accounts? 
Well, multiple recordings. We're not talking about email accounts at this okay. particular response. Because it is a response from San Diegans for Open Government, and Mr. Queros is here as a representative of that entity, my question is just if he can provide further explanation as what it was meant well, so when there's on. a statement of multiple accounts. Sorry, let, let's clarify something. I don't think you noticed him up as the representative of San Diegans for Open Government. You sent a deposition to yes. him as a private person. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. Uh, that's normally, correct. if you're taking an entity's depot, you would tell what topic so they can designate a PMK or a PMQ. Uh, OK, you, you're asking about multiple reportings. I, I get that. Uh, I know Mr. Briggs and I are having this conversation, and you're sitting there going, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm just trying to, if I focus on this particular sentence in the response, mm -hmm. and you can read that. I don't want to convey something that I'm not. But it says, having heard multiple accounts of reporters having access to City Attorney Goldsmith through his private account, if you can provide any additional information other than this statement as to what it was, what multiple accounts means. No, I can't, other than what I've already testified to as far as my information. Okay. And if you see right there uh, down below that same paragraph, the last sentence says, the office of the city attorney has a media center and a communication director. Do you see that sentence? Yes. Do you know the purpose of including that sentence in this response? I'm going to object on attorney-client privilege grounds and ask the witness not to answer if you want to qualify your question or narrow it to escape that objection. I'd be happy to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Well, let's see if I can simplify it and, and simply ask you, what's the purpose of this sentence, to your knowledge? I'm not sure if we're talking about the same thing, but is I think he's asking the sentence that begins with the Office of the City Attorney on lines mm -hmm. 20 and 21. He wants to know why is that in this discovery response? And the discovery response is particular. And it, all these discovery responses, there was a particular question asked. And just for, I guess, your information and background was to state all facts that San Diegans for Open Government possesses. And facts are particular as to why it is there they, the entity, believes Mr. Goldsmith is using his personal email account to conduct city business. And in response to that question, there is the sentence again, regarding the city attorney, media center, and communications director. So my question to you is, why was this sentence included in this response, if you know? And I would just ask the witness to consider what the question was that was being responded mm -hmm. to. To conduct official business of the city of San Diego? No, I don't want you to guess. My, my question is really specific, is if you know, and the answer could simply be, I don't know. Well, that's what I think it's. OK, but I don't want uh, the guess or the. Uh, you know, that's what I think. If you're not, I don't know, but that's what I think. Understood, and this is pretty common. I, I, I really want just what you have knowledge of. That's all I have. Yeah, 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 understood. But I don't want you to guess. I don't want you to assume. I don't want you to speculate. And like I said, it is permissible simply to say, I don't know why it's there. Okay. Is that your answer? You don't know why it's there? I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'm just. You, you mean independent of what he's <laughs> learned from his lawyer, right? I, I, think it's, I think it's the basis of anything. He is now, was the, he verified these responses. Well, but and I'm asking why this response was included. But David, you know that with written interrogatories, the responding party is obligated to tell you <clears throat> everything that they know to be responsive or believe to be responsive in good faith. And case law has construed that to mean information that the attorneys might have on the topic, even if the client doesn't have independent knowledge of it. That's the difference between, one of the differences between interrogatories and depositions. Understood. So, and I, I think it, it, a fair answer could simply be, I don't know. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not, we're arguing about the same thing, I think. Or we're okay. 
if you look, if you don't, know, if you don't know, know, I don't have independent knowledge of of why that sentence is in there. Okay. Well, then I have to ask a follow-up question to that, and I'm not asking you again if you learned this information from your attorney or where that information, what specific information you might have learned, but given your response is, do you have knowledge of why that response is in there independent of your attorney? No. Okay. Other than what you've stated this morning, uh, do you have, know of any other facts? And this is this kind of including one you know, question regarding this area that Mr. Goldsmith is using his private email account to conduct his official city business, other than what you've told me. No. If you go forward to page 13, in particular, I'm going to ask you a question regarding the response to special interrogatory number seven. Do you see interrogatory number seven on page 13? Yes, I do. Okay, having that interrogatory in mind, if you can flip to page 15, top of the page, the beginning of the first full paragraph, there's a sentence, again, reads, responding party has heard of multiple accounts of reporters having access to the city attorney through his private email account. It's the same sentence that we just discussed. It actually looks like the same paragraph, in fact. <laughs> it more than likely is. I'm just going to ask, is your answer about helping me understand what multiple accounts the same as what we've just discussed? Yes. Okay. And that, for clarification, is the response now to special interrogatory number seven. It would be the same as your responses to the questions regarding special interrogatory number one. He's really just saying, if you compare one and seven, same answer, print it. Is your answer the same? Yes. Okay. If you turn to page 16, See, I'm not going to ask you about that. That was marked, but I'm not going to ask. Kind of fast forward in the document to page 62. Questions regarding the response to special interrogatory number 34. Where is that? Oh. You got the bottom mm -hmm. of the page. Again, this interrogatory says, please state all facts, any and all facts that support your contention that every member of the San Diego City Council and every mayor has used his or her personal email account to conduct official city business, as stated in paragraph two of the complaint. Do you see that? Yes. Question. Okay, with that question in mind, do you have any independent facts that you're aware of that would support that contention that every city council member and every mayor has used his or her personal email account to conduct city business. Independent facts meaning independent of what he's learned from the law firm, right? That's correct. No, I can't say that. I don't know. You don't know? No. Is that that you don't know of any or you can't recall any? I can't recall any right now. If you turn your attention to page 64, now I'm going to ask you about the entities. And I, when I use entity, I don't know, Corey, I'm sorry, is the proper, is I've heard S dog, sand dog, and an appellate opinion? <laughs> sand dog, S dog, whatever is easiest for you guys. I think everyone understands it to be the okay. same. Okay, so now I'm going to ask about the entity, San Diego for Open Government, and this response. If you look at the top of page 64, beginning on line 4. It says yeah, let, there. Let's just, that relates to the question. Oh, sorry. This is the response related to the question you were just asking about. Right. Yeah, which is special interrogatory number 34. Any facts to support the contention that council members and the mayor have used their personal email accounts? 
It reads, there have been various reports over the years, through the media and otherwise, of each of the various city council members and mayors using their personal email to conduct city business. Do you see that response? Yes. Can you tell me what reports exist to support this statement? Independent of what he knows through his attorneys, correct? See, I think that it's fair to ask him to state what he has knowledge of, irregardless of where the source. Well, number one, irregardless isn't a word. No, I know. Uh, number two, regardless of the source. Yeah, uh, number two, I think that's not correct. Uh, you can ask him whether he has independent knowledge, uh, just as you have on the other questions. But you, uh, okay, well, I'll ask the first question. Do you have any independent knowledge of these reports as stated in this answer? As of right now, without researching it, no, I don't. Yeah, Corey, I always say irregardless, and I always catch myself. It's <laughs> not a word. It's buried in my brain, but it is not proper English. <laughs> At least it's just not proper English. I get accused of just having a foul mouth. So. <laughs> I'm being very nice, so I don't get in trouble that way. If I could turn your attention to page number 70, and in particular, special interrogatory number 40, which appears at the top of page 70. I see it. Again, this interrogatory asked to please state any and all facts that support your contention that several city council members have publicly bragged that their use, uh, that they use their personal email accounts to conduct official city business as stated in paragraph two of the complaint. Do you have any facts independent of your attorneys that would support that contention that you have knowledge of? No. Do you know of any witnesses, independent of your attorney, that would support that contention as stated in Special Interrogatory Number 40? No. Do you know of any documents that would support the contention as stated in Special Interrogatory Number 40? Independent of his attorney. Independent Correct. of your attorney. No. Turning your attention to page 77, special interrogatory number 46. Which reads, please state any and all facts that support your contention that Goldsmith and some of the other elected city officials have actually agreed explicitly that the city attorney's office would respond to certain undesirables or gadflies trying to gain disclosure of personal email communications dealing with official city business in the manner used in this case as stated in paragraph two of the complaint. Do you see that? Yes. Do you have knowledge of any facts independent of your attorney that would support that contention? No. I'm asking that you turn to page 78 line 16 of this particular form and the response reads responding party has heard various rumors but is without personal knowledge of the conversations do you see that sentence yes do you have knowledge as to what these rumors are independent of your attorney no have you yourself heard of rumors that the city attorney and other elected officials would respond as contention is to undesirables or gadflies in the same manner that is alleged to have been done in this matter? From sources other than his attorney, correct? From sources other than your attorney. No. Do you know of any witnesses that could support this contention? as discussed in Special Interrogatory Number 46, independent of your attorney? No, not independent. Do you have any knowledge of any documents 
that would support the contentions as raised in special interrogatory number 46, independent of your attorney? No. I'm going to ask that you turn to page 82, in particular special interrogatory number 51, which reads, please identify any and all, well, I should go back, I'm sorry, I jumped around too fast. Page 81, Special Interrogatory 49. Yes. Okay. It says, please state any and all facts that support your contention that Goldsmith reportedly has told one of his elected colleagues in the context of limiting access to such personal email communications, I'll scratch your back if you'll scratch mine, as stated in paragraph 2 of the complaint. Do you see that interrogatory? Yes. Do you have any knowledge of any facts independent of what you may have learned from your attorney to support that contention? No. Do you know of any witnesses that would support that contention independent of your attorney? No. Do you know of any documents independent of your attorney that would support that contention? No. Have you ever heard of this conversation even taking place, I guess, outside of any conversations you may have had with your attorneys? This quote unquote, I'll scratch your back if you'll scratch mine. No. So is it fair to say then that you don't know of any factual basis to support this contention, again, independent of your attorney? Uh, outside of my attorneys, no. Yeah, I don't want to ask, maybe I should ask it this way. I don't want to ask what your attorneys have told you or what you know, but do you have knowledge that there is a factual basis to support this contention that you gain through discussions with your attorney? Yeah. Is that a correct statement? Would Madam Reporter read the question, please? Yeah, I don't want to ask, maybe I should ask it this way. I don't want to ask what your attorneys have told you or what you know, but do you have knowledge that there is a factual basis to support this contention that you gain through discussions with your attorney? Well, I am going to object to that because the end of it says that you gain through your attorney. So I'm going to object on attorney-client privilege grounds. Well, Corey, could that question not be answered as in a yes or no fashion? I'm not asking for the specifics. But the, the answer conveys the substance of the response, because you basically said... I, I understood. So that, that's my problem with it. Uh, and, and just again, as our meet and confer sort of discussions yeah. on the record here, this is one of the interrogatories where the city has moved to compel a response because no response was given in these written answers. There were objections raised, but nothing specifically stated. I understand. Okay. So you're still going to continue the objection that if he has any knowledge of any facts to support this, which would include information that he's gained through his attorneys, and I think that answer could be yes or no. I'm going to stand on the objection and instruct him not to answer. You're going to follow your attorney's instruction? Yes. And ask that the record be marked. ask if you can turn to page 105, in particular special interrogatory number 64, in 
That our interrogatory reads, please state any and all facts that support your contention that San Diego City Attorney Jan I. Goldsmith violated the California Constitution as asserted in the first cause of action of the complaint. Do you see that contention? Kind of. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Do you have any knowledge of any facts, independent of what you may have learned through your attorney, to support that contention that Mr. Goldsmith has violated the California Constitution? No. Do you know of any witnesses that would support the contention that Mr. Goldsmith has violated the California Constitution, independent of your attorney? No. Do you know of any documents to support the contention that Mr. Goldsmith has violated the California Constitution? Independent of your attorney, mm, I'm not sure if the what you read in the press would would ri rise to that level. But other than that, no. And when you say the press, that's the, the reader and that what we talked about earlier. And, and also, I mean, understand we've given you a bunch of documents already through discovery. So, I maybe the witness. Well, I don't even know whether your question means other than what you've received through discovery or through the pleadings, or you're trying to encompass all of that, but maybe you should make that clear. Okay. We'll see if I'll wrap it up in, the, in a minute. I just have if miss one or two more questions. Page 111, special interrogatory number 67. And that interrogatory reads, please state any and all facts that support your contention that San Diego Attorney Jan I. Goldsmith violated the San Diego City Charter as asserted in the first cause of action of the complaint. Do you see that interrogatory? Yes. Do you have any facts or have knowledge of any facts independent of your attorney to support that contention? No. Do you have any knowledge of any witnesses independent of information you may have gained from your attorney to support that contention? No. Do you have knowledge of any documents uh, other than those documents that you may have gained knowledge of through your attorney to support that contention? No. Okay. Getting back to the verification, the last document, the one that has the paper clip on it. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what you did uh, in order to, again, sign this verification? What did you undertake? I met with my attorney. Okay. Other than meeting with your attorney, did you do anything else? Listen and discuss the issue. Okay. Did you review the responses themselves? This entire, is this what you're talking about? Yes, yeah, correct. Uh, some of it, but not all of it. Okay. Do you recall which interrogatory responses you reviewed? No, not right now. Do you recall? the interrogatory responses that you did not review. I'm going to object. He did, actually didn't say, so it misstates his testimony. He, he didn't say that he didn't review any responses. What he said is he didn't review everything in the document. And as you know, some of it is legal objections that the attorneys would make, okay. and some of it is factual information. Was it fair to say that you read every response that's written in this document? I believe so. And what's your belief based upon? Just reading the complaint. And the responses themselves? I mean, again, this is not the complaint what we've marked as exhibit number 10. This is mm -hmm. the written responses to the city's special interrogatories. Yes, I have, re I have read them. And you read them before you signed the verification? Yes. I don't have anything further. Thank you. So let's just go off the record so we don't take up time talking about autographing the transcript. So the witness is going to be out of town. Okay, so we just had a conversation off the record. Uh, the proposal is to have the court reporter relieved of her 
custodial duties. She's going to send the original transcript to my office. Uh, I will make sure that it gets to the witness who will re read it, correct it if necessary, sign it under penalty of perjury, then return things to my office. I will notify Mr. Carlin's office that of any changes of the fact of signing. Uh, the witness is going to have 45 days from my receipt of the transcript from the court reporter to get everything back and turned around to Mr. Carlin. Uh, my office will retain the original. We will produce it upon reasonable prior notice for any purpose of this lawsuit. If for some reason the original is not available, a certified copy as supplemented by any changes and the signature uh, may be used in lieu of the original for any purpose of this lawsuit. So stipulated. So stipulated. Thank you. Thank you. We're off the record. Thank you. Okay. All right.